Len Apker, your Deputy Managing Editor of the International Herald Tribune and yeah. Chief Editor for Asia. Thanks for joining us on Knowledge. You, you took part recently in the, the Business Journalist Seminar. You were the guest speaker and you, you were telling us about um, your time on the New York Times. When you were helping to basically set up the web edition at the mm -hmm. time. That's right. How do you see the new media developing vis-a-vis -vis the, the sort of print edition of the, the Times? I think that digital storytelling will be complementary to print storytelling and that American journalism, Western journalism, all forms of journalism is going to have to become uh, much more uh, diverse in the way it looks at stories. So uh, a New York Times reporter, for instance, now is uh, called upon to think about the story in terms of web elements, interactive graphics, uh, video, storytelling, uh, uh, additional photography, perhaps putting more documents up in support of the story, giving the reader a much more enriched experience uh, online uh, that goes beyond th the printed page. I always used to say when I was web editor, we've got to tell stories in ways the paper cannot tell them. Well, how do you do that? I mean, what, how do you tell a story in well, a way that newspaper can You know, can't? if it's a story about sounds, we should be able to hear it. If it's a story that's visual, we should be able to, to, to see it. Uh, a, a newspaper can run sometimes one, two, maybe three photographs with a story. I thought the web could run eight. Uh, and we can blow the pictures up and make them more vivid uh, and, and uh, get into more detail. We can explain things more with an interactive um, graphic where you can Use the, use the computer to steer things and see things in two or three dimensions and that kind of thing that you can't do on the printed page. But do you think that ultimately you're going to be kind of cannibalizing your own audience with, uh, with the online version that it's going to take readers away from the print version? You know, everyone thought that that would happen. And what we found is that over the years, and the website is uh, uh, more than 10 years old now, it's all going on to its 12th year. And, uh, what we've found is that there is very little overlap, first, among readers. It's hard to believe because a lot of journalists think, oh, I read the paper and I read the website. There must be a lot of people like me. But in fact, that's not true. Secondly, people read the website differently than they read the paper, even those that do read both. Uh, people come to the web for headlines, for um, uh, uh, an overview, quick overview, an update of what's going on in the world or in their community or in their city. And uh, uh, they don't necessarily come to it um, for the same kind of deep, lean back, open the paper up, read that, that we're accustomed to with print journalism. Uh, they also recognize that print journalism, newspapers, magazines, and other kinds of uh, old form media, if you will, give you a sense of fun serendipity to show you stories or things that you weren't necessarily looking for. The web, when I say people read the web differently, the web is very much a search and obtain medium. I'm going and I'm looking for an update. I'm going and I'm looking for a fact. I'm going and looking for a particular uh, uh, topic and I want to explore it. And th that's fine that can be very complementary to what a print product and a newspaper report or a magazine can do. And also, I suppose, the, for the time issue, that's, you know, your paper, you're usually just putting it out once a, once a morning. Um, with, the, with the web, you can update it straight away. You can away update it all, all the there. time. And I think people now are much more comfortable of getting their news on a handheld device, whether it's a cell phone or a, or a, a digital assistant of some kind. They could read it, on, read it for their headlines, and I don't necessarily think that takes away from the reading experience, say, the next morning. We are cognizant, though, of the fact that our readers oftentimes will have heard the news during the day, and we cannot put a story into the paper tomorrow that assumes in every respect that they, that they do not know the news. So we, uh, we have to assume that they have heard something about a major development. And they're looking for more analysis. They're looking for more detail. They're looking for a richer storytelling experience that gives them more insights into what's happening. 
and understands that that reader ha may have listened to television, may have listened to radio, may have had a headline and a brief story on the web before coming to the printed page. Many newspapers, including the New York Times, uh, the Wall Street Journal, had, uh, had been charging for the uh, online version to access premium content. Uh, the Wall Street Journal we is only charging charge for most content. That's right. We only charge, though, for a very, very small sliver of all the material that was on our site, whereas the Wall Street Journal charged for almost completely the, their, whole, their whole site. We charge for our, our staff columnists and we charged for um, a package of things that included the archive. And FT was also charging for premium. And now people, are starting, hybrid, that's and right. now people are starting to back off from that model. There was a school of thought a few years ago that um, there was a cannibalization fear, that uh, people were coming to the website and, and using it for free and, and canceling their subscription for the paper or not buying it on certain days uh, from their news kiosk. And I think that has happened around the edges, but that has not been the primary driver of, of web growth in terms of readership growth. What has happened is that people have come to the web because uh, they need something and they want something and they want a different experience. And, th and that has proven to be a very successful advertising model by itself. And that in fact, you can make up the difference, say, of the subscription revenue by advertisements on the web, just as readers come in greater volume, more and more ads can be sold to those readers, and you can you can generate more growth than if you put a pay gate on the site and said, "Gee, you know, you have to pay to get any further," and that pushes some people back, and in fact, loses ultimately loses more revenue than you would otherwise get from subscriptions. Well, we've seen Rupert Murdoch by Dow Jones, Wall Street Journal. Um, is that going to lead to a shake-up in the industry? Is it going to have a major impact? I don't know yet. It could. It, it very well could. Um, but I think that most of the competitors that he faces in the international arena are strong. Uh, they're run by very capable people. Uh, they have great resources. Um, he is also... Uh, uh, has a very capable team. He has a lot of resources. Uh, he's brought a tremendous brand in the Wall Street Journal uh, with a tremendous uh, journalistic reach and power. He walks into a play on a, onto a playing field with the International Herald Tribune, the New York Times, uh, the, the Wall Street Journal, uh, the Financial Times. He, he walks onto a very strong playing field and nobody will be easily pushed over. Um, and he has to pick his spots. I don't think he can take us all on in, in every different way. So we'll have to wait and see what he does. Um, nobody's going to run away. It's a competitive playing field. And um, we'll have to wait and see what his first moves will be. Just briefly, how do you see online journalism progressing from here over, say, the next few years? So we've seen bloggers, blog sites. Um, possibility of star journalists setting up their own blog sites is the Huffington Post, which is proving pretty popular. You know, I think blogs have added a lot to journalism and to the web experience. I don't think that they are the, the last great new thing about the web. I think they will be succeeded by something else. And I think some blogs work quite well and some blogs don't. Uh, some blogs are not frequently f refreshed and posted to and probably should just die by the wayside. Um, so I do think blogs will be with us um, in a number of different ways. I think video blogs will continue to grow. I think YouTube has been fabulously su successful in many respects. I think you can see that, that developing into, uh, into another form of, ju of journalism. Um, I think that we can... We, we have used, when I was editor at the Times website, we did video blog, uh, trips to North Korea. Um, when it, one of our correspondents, or in that particular case, a, a staff writer went to North Korea, we thought people wanted to see what that looked like and we would video blog that. So I can see more and, that, more, and more of that happening. I find this kind of um, material supplemental to the principal news report, which is what people want. We always have to remember that we're in the business of giving people information and we're gonna give it to them the way they want to get it. 
And if they want it on a particular device, we'll be there. If they want it um, in short form blog postings, we'll offer that to them as well. Knowing full well that not everybody wants to get their information in a long form article or even a medium sized article. Um, I think that uh, there will be much more interactivity. There'll be much more discussion around an article um, it, within, a, within a group. I think people will come to the New York Times website or the International Herald Tribune's website knowing that they can expect a certain community of readers to interact with and discuss and, and to have a certain kind of experience that will give them additional information, additional documentation, more photographs, video, that kind of thing. I see that all of us getting better and better at this, and I see newsrooms around the world becoming um, truly platform agnostic. You know, they were platform agnostic in, in philosophy, in the sense that a newspaper newsroom would say, well, we're going to put out a report, uh, but we're also going to put it for the web, but we're also putting out a newspaper, and that's principally the way they were organized. That, I think, will slowly evolve, and newsrooms will be phys physically reorganized over time to become um, a, a place where news is gathered, written, edited, and then given out to various platforms, whether it's the web, whether it's video, whether it's multimedia or print, and then it goes through the traditional process to drive it into the print newspaper or the magazine or the video report. Len Apko of uh, the International Herald Tribune, thanks for joining us. Happy to do it. Thank you.